Welcome to Connection with Brian and Nicole Wright. Hi, welcome to Connection Show. We are so glad you've joined us today. Um, and you can actually join us anytime by going to ConnectionShow.org. You can see past episodes or you can watch this one again because it's going to be awesome. We are interviewing Sherman Cox today. Yes. Hi, Sherman. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> It's been awesome already being here cutting up behind the scenes. Y'all need to enjoy yeah. watching all the episodes. It's really enlightening. Amen. Amen. We've been, today ha we have filled up the blooper reel for today. <laughs> we don't need any more blooper uh, cuts and video on there, but we're just glad to have you here today, man. It's, uh, you have been at coming to Boomerang for quite some time and been quite a blessing to us and uh we're just very happy to have you not only at church but also on connection with us with uh, Brian and Nicole and we just we do invite you go to connectionshow.org and connect with us send us prayer requests comment question let us know where you're watching or listening from and uh, so just come in and join and connect with us we just praise God for you so thank you for being with us today and let's just jump right in so I had um, you know, we've had several interviews on The Connection Show with uh, several different people that go to church. And a lot of times, they've just been people that have had uh, testimonies that God's really been moving through them, and they have been growing. And I know you have grown a ton, and you've been here for, I think, a part of Boomerang for, what, three or four years, something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you're, you're one of those people that the first day you walked in the door, I went, man, I like that guy, and I know he's supposed to be here. <laughs> and it just felt at home, literally, from day one. And uh, that's the way we felt. So You're part of the family. Yeah, oh. yeah. So, it's great to be part of a family. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> a growing, loving family. <laughs> amen, amen. But, uh, man, God's been moving in your life. I know you've seen the power of God, and you've been growing, and now you're on the part of our leadership team and everything as well and we just wanted to you know have you on here and talk about what all the Lord's been doing in your life and so why don't you just tell us some of um, you know some of what's been going on from the time that you came oh my goodness from the time that I came <laughs> mm, we have several episodes then um, well it's just getting a real enlightening and open up your mind and heart to know I mean I've grew up in church all my life but not necessarily being taught the wisdom and understanding and leading that you'll get in growing in maturity and discipleship yeah. and that was huge and because a lot of times growing up I consider y'all more teachers than preachers right because I grew up being preached at right and it's like okay this 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 okay but that's not an intimate relationship with God I mean, reset when you uh, preach the series or taught it, it really hit home. Like, wait a minute, I can have fellowship with God the way we talk yes. right now. Yes. You know, and that's huge because He wants to guide you, not just, oh, well, I only talk to God for major things. No, He wants to talk to you all the time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, intimately about every detail and growing. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that kind of gives us a clue that He wants us to have that kind of intimacy all the time and um, so how did your prayer life change with that I mean and what did you experience well it's huge because I mean I've learned a lot not just from y'all but other pastors that I've been you know listening to and it's not really a prayer time it's more fellowship daily yeah. you pray without ceasing that's what the word says yeah. yeah and if you're walking through your day Regardless of what's going on, you can learn and pray in the Spirit. And, you know, that opened up a whole new dimension of everything. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yeah. And not understanding that growing up. Right. And, and you have authority. By You know, your words have power. I mean, I understood divine appointments. And like you said, when I first come in, I mean, I was searching. I knew I had a start inside searching for a home. Right. But I wasn't going to just go just because it felt good. I, I went to different places looking, and then I felt placed here at Boomer yeah, yeah. and plugged in. And that's huge not to jump around, but you need to get plugged into the Lord and where he's feeding you because he wants to get life and love and all kinds of blessings to you. But too many people are preached at and almost like, well, I'm scared to go to church because I'm going to get 
much debt. Yeah. I mean, I know yeah. some people that feel yeah. that way. They really do. Yeah, absolutely. You're not and understanding, and I've seen by learning how to watch my words, and we're in the word series now, but um, is watch and listen, and don't necessarily always think you got to be the one to tell your point. Like with my kids, I've got three kids, so I'm like, okay, Lord, do I say something here or not? Yeah. And, you know, being taught to be a disciple, and, you know, Jesus only done what he saw the Father do or said what the Father said. That's yes. it. Yeah. He didn't just go around blabbing his mouth all the time. That's right. And I'm sorry, but, you know, I, I was a sinner. I mean, I made mistakes. I blabbed all the time and told my youngest what to do. <laughs> right. I mean, but not knowing in maturity, you know, you don't need to tell people. Even, yeah. you know, even your own children, you need to teach them and grow them and love on them and let them understand, okay, I want to do this because Daddy loves me and I love Daddy and I want to do it yeah. just like me and God. I mean, yeah. I, I don't want to, I don't come to church and do what I do just to say, okay, well, I've done it, check, go home. Yeah. I do it because I love God and he's pouring into me and I, if I can do anything to bless him, that's what I want to do. Amen. So you, I can tell just by listening to you, you're, if, if you really just listen to what you just said over the last few minutes, you can tell that this is more than just checking the box for you. You are moving in some intimacy now that's awesome. In other words, you are having some interaction with God, with the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, and you can tell. I, I can just hear it in your voice, so that's really awesome. And, um, you know, we just we encourage you, look, there's an intimacy for you, too, with God. That's one of our main uh, points here at, at Boomerang and on The Connection Show is to connect you with Christ. And uh, he mentioned a series called Reset, which you're welcome to go check it out. You can go to, uh, we talked about it here on The Connection Show, yeah. so you can watch those episodes. You can also go to boomerangchurch.org slash reset, and that'll show you where we preached it here at the church. Pretty in-depth study, mm -hmm. but in that, one of the things that we looked at was, it's kind of like the Pharisees. Here's the one. Here's the one thing. Jesus was in front of the Pharisees, and he said, "You search the scriptures." And one translation says, "Daily you search the scriptures, looking for the Messiah, looking for me." And what becomes obvious is there was Jesus, the Son of God, standing in front of them. They were doing all these holy and religious things, but here was Jesus standing right in front of them, and they didn't recognize him. They didn't have intimacy. So there's something different than just praying for a certain number of hours, just reading your Bible, just going to church. There's something different there. There's a level of fellowship and intimacy, and that's what you've experienced. Absolutely. And it's so important. And uh, I know that you've seen uh, the Lord move. Be thinking about some of the major testimonies that you've had in here. I know he's come through for you in, in multiple ways. Um, but... There's uh, one of the things that's great about uh, you for us is that you just came in. You said it earlier. You said, I wasn't just looking for a place where I'm comfortable. You said you pretty much alluded exactly. to this. You were looking for a place where 1 Corinthians 12, 18 says God has placed the members. And so a lot of times what we need to do when we are going to look for a church is we don't need to go to the place where we're comfortable, where our, where our kids are com comfortable. We need to, all we really need to do is ask the Lord for wisdom. James chapter 1 says he will give us wisdom. What's my place? Where is my place? And then hear from him and then be obedient to be in that place, whether we like it or not, because it's not us that should be making the choice. God's already said, I've made the choice. I have placed you there. And that's what you did. And it's been beautiful. I mean, it's you. I know that you just said you, you've been blessed, but I'm going to tell you that Nicole and I yeah. and our church has been blessed by having you here too. <laughs> and um, you've just been very... Here's, here's some of the great things about uh, Sherman is... Uh, he take he brings in uh, loyalty, a work, a good work ethic, and he's very humble, and he's willing to learn and grow. And those things I think are huge, and it's been a blessing to me because not everybody does that. But um, it's just made me be able to, if I need something, I can depend on you, and I appreciate that very much. So oh, thank you. I know so Nicole and I both Blessing the Lord, too. blessing me to be here. Amen. So that's awesome. Amen. And, and I mean, you're talking about thinking stuff. It's just what keeps coming up I mean he's blessed me I mean you come here learning about I mean tithe is huge and that's the basics 
I mean, the Lord says, this is the basis. This is easy. You tithe 10% of your income. And I know going to church growing up, I mean, I love my mom and dad. I know they love me. It's just I didn't see it modeled the way I want an intimate relationship for my kids to see that I have, and they've seen a change yes. in the way I talk to them and the way I walk and the way I act and, and live, and that's what I want for them is a more fulfilled life understanding, hey, you need yes. to be an intimate relationship with God. And then my kids come asking me about financial questions. I'm like, okay. I said, I'm not trying to ram God down your throat, but he's the answer. Right. So, I mean, okay, how big a sign do you want pointing you to the right answer, really? Right. And just being obedient, okay. A good example, not just me, but my son. And I was like, he asked me. I said, okay, you ask. I'm going to give you the answer to what the Lord leads me of. Are you sowing? Okay, you wonder why the devil steals everything you've got. You work. I'm tired of working all the time, working all these hours. And then you right. got nothing. Well, that's because you're stealing your tithe from the Lord, and the devil has full reign. Yeah. Just take everything away from you. Yeah. And he started understanding that, and they started coming. That's a blessing because it's like, I told him, I said, I'm not telling y'all to come to church. I said, that's your choice because it's your relationship with God. Yes. It's not me to tell you. You're not going to heaven and give, going to live an intimate life with him because I do. You're right. You've got to walk it out for yourself and learn that's very important yeah. to me. But it's really helped you. Yeah. And I oh, think absolutely. they can see it. That, to me, is one of the greatest testimonies that you have going right now is that you uh, you chose to be consistent in going after God. Uh, I've seen you do that multiple times. I, we've seen you mm -hmm. do that multiple times where you could have taken what the world would say is an easier way, but you said, I'm going to go after the Lord. And as you've walked that out in consistency, it has proven the goodness of God and His desire to love and pour out and demonstrate that power in your life. And now you've got people that are seeing that, particularly in this case right now, I think your children are starting, I'm seeing some good change and some a draw in their hearts where the Holy Spirit is flowing through your testimony and drawing on people around you and moving them closer to God because of that. And that's, that's huge. Oh yeah, it is. That's huge. Well, see, and that's one thing. Well, like you said, I've noticed not just at church and not just with my kids, but I know I was picking earlier about at work. I mean, it's like everybody's, I'm the, the go-to guy. I mean, if you need something, ask a question, whatever your problem is, I've learned it because I just want to know. I mean, if I know how to fix stuff and help stuff, right. if I can help you because I, I know something. And it all goes back to what y'all teach. I mean, about, okay, the Lord's placed talents in me. Yes. I need your talents and you need mine. So we need to grow each other up. And that way the whole body go, grows. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yeah. And that's Amen. what we all need. And, I mean, just like if you come visit Boomerang, that don't mean you're placed here, but we want to help you find where you are placed because yes, you're in the do. body and you need to be there instead of taking up somebody's place here. Yeah. We need you there in your place at that body because yeah. we're all one body. Yes. And that's huge. And, I mean, it's been a blessing because I know y'all, my dad started coming, and which blew me away because that's awesome because I've seen a hunger grow in him yeah. just because I came. And I'm like, that blesses me. <laughs> Huge. Yeah, amen. Do you have any questions or comments for him right now? Well, you were talking about some of the great things with Sherman, and this is one thing I always really appreciate with you is that um, Sherman comes with an expectation. Like, he is he's looking for, he comes expecting to be a blessing yes. and expecting to be blessed. So from the time Sherman walks in the door, he is looking for ways to help, to bless others. But knowing you're going to be blessed, knowing he's going to receive something, you know, from God, be it through Pastor Brian or through a member of the church or whatever. And I think that is such a good example to everyone else who comes in. And, you know, I know I tell you often, thanks for all you do, but I don't think, I don't, I don't think you understand just what a blessing that is. And it's such a huge blessing to not just Brian and I, right. but anybody that walks in those doors knows if they need something they can go to Sherman because he's looking to bless the body but then when it comes time for service be it worship or be it you know teaching or preaching he is looking to receive and expecting yes. a word that is not only going to change his life but help him to impact the kingdom and it is it's refreshing to see someone that's not just coming to check their box yes. but coming to be blessed to be a blessing Yes. And that is, it's, 
it's refreshing, and I appreciate that. So thank you. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Well, absolutely. It's awesome. <laughs> you mentioned your dad earlier. Um, I know a couple of years ago, he had when he first started coming, he started catching hold that, hey, Jesus has a life for me, and it's a full life, and he got a hold of that. And tell that um, testimony yeah, about Yeah, he that. even, yeah, he's retired from the Air Force. Well, he pulled like five years, but they go to the Air Force retirement, and they're gone right now, actually. And... Uh, he was sitting around the table with some gentlemen that he went, that he served with, and they had, uh, one of them had cancer. And he felt led because of coming here and being fed and understanding who he is and that he's seated in heavenly places with Christ, that he has authority. And so he prayed for him, and he was healed. And Amen. that really blessed my dad, knowing. Yeah. And it was a testimony to, he said, because afterward he noticed even everybody else around him that were in their own conversation stopped and listened yes. and were drawn and that's just the Lord pouring out love to all of them. Yeah. So they all received something whether they realize it or not. Yeah. They got an impartation of something not just the one he laid hands and healed. Yeah. So I mean it, it was huge for him and he's it's really got him stirred and he don't miss a Wednesday night service. Yes. Yeah. And he's come on a lot of Sundays. So it's He's awesome. really such a blessing. And that's a great connection to what we were talking about earlier because all right, so your dad is not a pastor. Mm -mm. He's not apostle, prophet, evangelist, no, a pastor, or teacher. <laughs> he's just a believer. He's just a Christian, right? And uh, his this talking about that intimacy and talking about that relationship that we're supposed to have. So when he first started, this was the first few months of him coming, he started to see, hey, there's some promises in this word that is awesome. And he started grabbing a hold of that with his faith and making that his. And this situation came up, and I think he was just moved with the compassion that's in his heart. And his prayer was not like some super spiritual yeah, exactly. you know, prayer. You know, it was, it was pretty much, if I remember it right, his prayer was something along the lines of, you're going to be just fine, and Jesus loves you, and it was something along those lines, and that was about it. <laughs> that, that's it, and I mean, that's yeah. what we don't realize is that don't mean you have to pray for 30 minutes when you pray for yes. somebody. Yeah. I mean, the power of the Lord will move yeah. in love in a minute. Yes. Or in a second, I mean. It wasn't the anointing of a pastor flowing through him necessarily. He just a believer. Well, the love of the Father yes. will flow through him. That's it. That's it. It says those who believe right. shall lay yes. hands on the sick. It's not those who pray eloquently or pray certain words or even pray scripture. It's just those who believe will lay hands on the sick, yes. speak life. They will recover. Yes. It's as simple as that. Amen. And that, awesome. that's exactly what happened. It yeah. was nothing complicated. It was just real relationship and real fellowship with God. Um, and that was, I can't imagine what that would be like for you seeing him grab hold of this stuff and the love of God for himself and then releasing it to other people. I imagine that would be oh, a that's, blessing. That's huge just because, well, like I said, growing up in the church and he took us to church and I just know, you know, I'm his child. I mean, I know how he's lived. Yes. You know, and that's what I'm learning. Okay, take my, my relationship with my dad, earthly dad, now take it and put it in context with my heavenly father. Yes. Okay. If I have a problem or want to talk to somebody or need something, you know, before I came and learned about how you submit to your pastor. Right, right. But you'd always, I'd always go talk to my dad, you know. Yeah. He said, because, you know, I, you don't always have to take my advice. He said, I'll just give you a different perspective on yes. it. Yes. He said, don't, you know, do like he said, take a bits and pieces of what works. Yeah. That you figure and learn that'll apply to what you're going through. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, it was awesome because, I mean, sometimes him and my uncle would be talking and I'd be there with them. So, like I said, three heads is, you know, discussing different things in the conversation and learning to yes, grow it. Yeah. But it's been huge just because learning to submit to a pastor, two pastors, and I mean, like I said, I, I grew up being preached at, and I never really had a relationship with my pastors. Yeah. Because they were just, well, that's the preacher. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's a, di in my mind, that's a different term and a different classification. Whereas, yeah. I mean, by submitting to y'all, then I get the Lord to give y'all words of wisdom and dreams and interpretations and it pours into me and it helps me on my walk, not just in my life, but I know testimonies of the whole entire congregation and others outside of our congregation. Right. Just because 
y'all don't just love on us, y'all love on everybody. Yes. And that's it. It's the heart of the Father to love on everybody, not just one Amen. person. Well, and what's beautiful about that is, and, you know, we talk about this scripture a lot, but in uh, James 1.17, it says, Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. He's not turning away his love away from you one degree to the left or to the right. And so the truth of the matter is, if we do something good, that is you know, basically just coming from God. We have partnered with Him, but it's God that gets the glory for that. And, and I just love that, you know, the life, the fullness of life that's in this Word. I love that the fullness of life that really is in this Word, not something stale, not something necessarily just religious, not a pharisaical or hypocritical thing, but the reality of God's love. When it's preached, and when it's applied, it makes a difference. And in your case, I mean, your whole life has shifted. And it wasn't, it wasn't horrible, but your whole life has just risen to new levels simply because, you know, we're preaching and living this together, you know. Exactly. We're preaching and living it. You grabbed a hold of it. You started living it and preaching it by how you live. And your life and your family and everything has really risen. And... Uh, that to me is a huge, huge, <laughs> huge testimony. Yeah, amen. Is there what else? Uh, any other particular testimony that oh, you're? Oh, I was thinking something else and just flew. Yeah, went right, <laughs> <laughs> went right by. I was like, wait a minute, I'm listening. Because I mean, I just want to listen to anything, not just. I know there's different words that the Lord will flow through different gifts in the body. I mean, I just I've learned that. Well, I've always been a good listener. I mean, I've even had teachers tell me, "Well, you." That's how I learn. I don't really, I'm yes. not a good note taker. I listen, but I listen to what is going on. I don't yes. just, you know, ha I don't like idle conversation. And we got to talk about idle words yeah. recently too. So that was pretty cool. But yeah. in really in tune to what people are saying, whether good or bad, and try to lovingly steer them to, you know, not just browbeat them and quote scripture to yeah. them all the time, but how, yeah. if you'll learn to speak a little bit, you know, God loves you. You don't have to talk like that. You know, really, yeah. it's just, growing it's just my thing is huge words yeah it makes a big yeah. difference i mean even my kids my dad everybody around me my co-workers i mean and then they don't realize the the enlightenment by understanding what your words i see i mean because i can see in my past since coming to know this looking back okay i can see why these things happened because i can think back and remember I mean, he's talking wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> and that's huge. I mean, it yeah. really is. Yeah. Because you don't realize you're just speaking life or death to yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, and for years I've told my kids, in the mirror in the mornings when you brush your teeth, get up and look. Speak well of yourself to yourself. Yes. I mean, because especially with this day and time with the kids in school, and I know they're trying to put bullying down, but it's just if you let your peers talk junk about you or behind your back, and you take hold of that, well, you just gave that authority in your life. Yeah. And that's not good because it yeah. was spoke completely negative. Yeah. And so, I mean, you want to speak, you know, great things, not just to my kids, but everybody. Yes. You yeah. know, I want to sow good words into everybody and yeah. not be an idle, yeah. idle gossip or whatever, you know. I know people that gossip a lot. But. I think next week, uh, in next week's episode, I think that we'll talk some more about some of the testimonies. That, you think you really want me back? The direct, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd love to have you. It's, we'll talk more about some of the individual testimonies, but I know that there's probably some people that are watching or listening that can probably relate to how you answered this question. So when you first started coming to Boomerang, what is the thing when you started hearing us uh, talk and preach and live life, what is the thing or, or a couple of things that really stuck out to you, absolutely got your attention, and you realized there's something different about this word? What are some of those things? And uh, in that, how did it give you that hope? You know, it gave you, all right, hey, this, this can improve, you know. What are some of those things that really stuck out at the beginning? Well, one of the big things that stuck out for me was, I mean, I grew up and where I live, pretty much the community goes to this church. And I mean, that's just the way it was because 
it's more like a rural community and farming and everybody knew everybody and you didn't go to town much except yeah. for special occasions. But they grew up in this church and you knew and you loved each other, but coming here, I feel like they're missing something. They're missing the father's love that of a connected family, regardless yeah. of where you're coming from, because I know different members of our congregation are from all over the United States. I mean, yes. different, different yeah. states completely. And you think, you know, God is awesome. How he placed all these people in this one church. Yeah. Hmm, like he done something on purpose. You know yeah. I mean? Imagine that. God you know. does things on purpose. <laughs> he does, he does things on purpose. He's Whoa. pretty cool like that. But what? I mean, it's just, what? what? <laughs> but that's what, and the love you see them growing, it blesses me seeing people grow. Yeah. And they're, you know, and hear their testimonies because it's like they're getting, they're, they understand it just, it builds you because you're seeing God move in their life and they, the reality of the intimacy that they can have yeah. and the love. And it's just a love that, you really need to learn to understand. I mean, you don't, if yeah. it's not preached to you and taught to you, I mean, I know of people, friends of mine, that I know their mom and dads love them, but they don't understand what God's love really yeah. is yeah, and what it really means. I think that's a great point because the Lord, let, let me just, let me talk to you like this and let us let us talk to you like this. If you feel like there's something more out there, if you feel like, you know what, I just think God is trying to love me on a different level and I feel like I'm lacking, um, I can promise you there is more to Him. And here's why. Because in His Word, it tells us that He's going to do and wants to do more than we can ask or think. Mm. So if you have a thought that there's more to God, he's saying, and he's already answered that question and yeah. said, yes, I want to love you more than you can imagine, more than you can ask or think. And so what you're saying is, I felt a piece of that. And it changed you. Oh, yeah. And so if you're out there and you're uh, watching or listening and inside of you the Holy Spirit is saying, I got more for you. I, I love you more than you even know. I would just confirm that and say, that's absolutely true. That's the Holy Spirit. And if you will go after him, you will find him because he is just amazing and awesome. And uh, right now, if you want to start that, you can, I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care what it looks like or what the circumstances are. Right now, everything can shift and turn for you. And you can connect with God in a new way. And so right now, I just encourage you and I just invite you right now, make that decision. And just pray this prayer with me. Just say, Father, I just give myself to you right now. Lord, I, I make Jesus the Lord of my life. He is the director. He makes the decisions. He calls the shots. Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. And I believe, I believe, Father, that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. And he died for me. And I believe that by your Holy Spirit, you brought resurrection power into him and brought him back to life, declared me righteous, and rose me up together with him according to your word. And right now, I can be seated. And if I believe on you, confess him as Lord, I am seated with him in heavenly places in Jesus. And Lord, I just receive your fullness of the Holy Spirit right now. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We just praise God for you. Thank you. And we were glad that you were able to be with us for another episode of Connection. Sherman, man, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we just love you. And uh, y'all have a great day. Have a great week. Thank you for joining Brian and Nicole for this week's broadcast. Connection is all about connecting you more intimately with Jesus, where you can find true joy and really live. Contact us or watch more shows online at connectionshow.org. We love you. Have a great week.